You are now listening to the Going North Podcast with your host, author and speaker, Dom Bregman. And every Monday and Thursday, you're going to hear the voice of a different author share their stories, expertise, and their struggles that they had to overcome in life to leave you inspired to get more out of your life. Be sure to not only listen to this episode, but share with others, connect with the authors, and always advance others to advance yourself. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Going North Podcast, we're back at you again with another author baby in the hizzy, hizzy house. That's right. Like a busy, busy bone. That's right. And we're back at you with a wonderful author from the wonderful city of charm and crime known as Baltimore. And this author right here, he's also a fellow Toastmaster. He's a past divisional champion, and now he is a part of the business of immortality because he wrote and published a book called 101 Quotes for the Conscious Mind, baby. And he's got a new phrase for the book, baby. So if you are asleep right now, you're about to be woke, baby, woke in a good way. We're about to shake you up. We ain't going to stir you up, but we're going to shake you up and give you some of that good knowledge, baby. And you're probably wondering who this one flaw at the right here is, is going to be one of your favorite speakers, authors, and life coaches, the one, the only DM himself, Darren Mitchell. How are you today, sir? I am doing well. I am doing well. Man, what a wonderful introduction. I almost didn't know who you were talking about, man, but I appreciate it. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, when whenever people shout out DMs, they, they got to talk about you now, man. So, so the it. women, the, the ladies, they got to slide into you, buddy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to take that, but yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, my my initials are DM, so you know, be careful when you say you slide into the DM, because you might run into me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you are crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. Going? You know what's going north and D, baby. Welcome, man. It's been a long time coming. It has, it has, man. You you told me to write my. How long has it been? Because I know you remember the exact date. How long have you been telling me to write my book, man? Oh man, it's probably been almost two years now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know it's, it's been at least two years. Maybe I think it's going on three. Maybe is it going on three? <laughs> the way it's time goes, it least, feels like it. Yeah, it's been at least a whole two years that you told me to, you know, hurry up and write this book so I can, you know, get on. And then when your show came out, you're like, hurry up. I want you on the show. I want you on the show. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And, and, and finally, you know what, I just stopped playing. I said, all right, I'm going to get it done. That's right, baby, man. So how's it feel, man? The book's finally out, baby. Man, it feels great. It feels great. Uh, man, uh, I, I just – I had so many people, you know, support and respond. When I first put it out there, people were saying, look, I can't wait to get my copy. And, you know, when I when I sent them out, sent out the pre-orders first, the people that pre-ordered, I sent all of those out first. And, you know, as they started coming in, people were sharing, you know, that they got it and that they were super excited. So it's just, it's just a great feeling. And then one of the things that you said in the beginning that, you know, I was thinking about after it was published is the immortality piece. It's like this is your piece of immortality. This is your legacy. This is something that's going to live on long after I'm gone. And so, you know, when I – it took me a while to get excited about the book, and when it finally hit me, that was the thing that hit me. I said, wow, this is going to be here when I'm gone. This is something that my children are going to have to remember me by. And so it truly is a, a great feeling. Uh, I'm grateful to be able to step into the realm of immortality with you guys. So it's been it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey. That's right, man, and it's only the beginning. Right, right. Because now the real work begins. <laughs> you were <heard> about that. <laughs> now I gotta sell it. You know that's what I. That's, you know that's what I tell people. 
you know, I, you know, the congratulations are great, and I, you know, I appreciate it, and like I said, I'm grateful. But it's like now I'm thinking, like, man, uh, these books aren't going to sell themselves. Yep, that's the part, uh, folks. Don't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are like, yeah, I wrote my book. Awesome. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, okay, well, you know, you got to make some money, too, you know? <laughs> so that's it, and, you know, and I'm learning that, you know, that's a big part of it. And, and that's the scary part, you know, because now you got to put yourself in a, you know, I say this a lot. It's like now this is the part where I got to put myself out there. You know, I got a product out that can be judged now. You know, this is this book is an extension of me, and so now I'm I'm out into the world saying, hey, you know, would you purchase me? I can say that it's great, but it's up to the reader to determine whether, you know, they like it or not. And so that's a very uncomfortable place to be. And so that's why I say now, you know, this is this is the real work now. So, like you said, the journey is just beginning. That's right, baby. That's right. You got to write it. You got to publish it. Now you got to sell and promote, baby. Yep. I don't promote. That's right. <laughs> kind of reminds me of a other Toastmaster buddy of mine. Shout out to Eric Williamson. He <laughs> he asked how to feel. I'm like, yeah, man, this this book publishing is a great thing, but it's like a test to see how far you're willing to go to bet on yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And that's you know that's what it really boils down to. And it and it's because it's it's tough because natu- naturally at least for me, you know, I it's it's hard for me to to talk about myself. Like I don't even like to write bios. Like whenever somebody says, you know, send in your bio, I cringe because it's the thought of having to sit there and write, you know, a few paragraphs just about me. You know, it just makes me cringe. And now I gotta jump out into the world and say, hey, would you please buy me? And then when they say, why, why should we buy you? Now I have to tell you, a, you know, a bunch of compelling reasons as to why you should buy into me. Man, that's tough. It's tough. But I'm up for the challenge, though. I'm up for the challenge. I will say that. That's right, man. You got to be up for the challenge, man. You got you got GQ on the cover, man. You got to be right. ready for the challenge, man. Right, right. That's right. You can tell the ladies, man, yo, this is the chocolate man on the book cover. Like, man, if you lonely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one friend of mine said the only reason why she bought the book was because I looked like the singer Tank on the cover. There I you said, go. Well, look, whatever, <laughs> hey, whatever, whatever it takes, you know. Hey, I'll be Tank. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be Tank. Just buy, you know, buy my book, please. Well, I'll even act like I am Tank if that's going to get you to buy it. So, hey, it works for me. Well, there you go, man. Valentine's Day special. The first right. 21 ladies to buy the book, they will get a special Darren Mitchell song just for them. Including That's the right. Book, right. That's right. That's right. You know, I like that challenge. That's a good challenge. That's funny you should say that because I actually thought about that. Like, hmm, maybe I could do something with that whole, you know, somebody, you know, thought I was tank thing. You know, first 101 ladies that buy the book. Hmm, that's the you know, one. You might be on to something. Oh, yeah, man. And not just Tank the R&B singer, but uh, Tank that'll fill your mind with some good stuff. That's it. That's it. Some real stuff. Some real stuff. That's right. The real stuff for real, man. So what led to finally deciding on the 101 quotes for the conscious mind? What What was the thought process behind this? I actually got inspired to write the book from a young lady that goes to my church. She saw that I post quotes on my social media accounts on Instagram and Facebook a lot. And, you know, she's she's always just super, super encouraging. And, you know, anytime, you know, we see each other, she's just always encouraging me to push forward and, you know, keep, you know, keep moving. And this one particular day, she pulled me to the side and said, you know, 
all of those quotes that you you post online, you know you can turn that into a book, right? And I was like, hmm, I never thought of that. And it was like, you know, a light bulb went off. And, you know, after she told me, it, I, I just hit the ground running. You know, I said, you know what, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that. And I think I may have waited a day because that was on a Sunday. I probably waited till that either Monday or Tuesday. And I just said, you know what, I'm not going to ask anybody else if this is a good idea or not. I'm not going to, you know, wait to get any more confirmation. I'm just going to start writing. And so I also looked at it as an opportunity because when she said it, I immediately, like, got this, like, this vision of what the book could look like. And so I got the vision that I would have, you know, a quote on one side and, like, an explanation or, you know, how the quote affected my life on the other page. And, you know, I, I looked at it as a way to use, you know, what I've learned and from my experiences to really inspire somebody to be better. You know, I just got to work as soon as, you know, as soon as she said it. Now, I went through my, my Instagram, started pulling my favorite quotes out, started looking through my books, pulling out quotes. I had my own quotes that I had, uh, that I had posted as well. And, um, you know, I just got to work, man. Oh, man, my man caught the vision and started writing. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, it wasn't as, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, that that's for sure because look, I tell you, when I first when she first gave me the idea and then I then I got the I um idea to, you know, make pick one hundred and one, I just thought that number stood out. So I there's no special, you know, numerical universe thing to why I pick one hundred and one. When I started going through the quotes and, and picking a picking a quotes out, I said, "Man, this is going to be easy." You know, how hard can it be to write on some quotes? So I initially thought I was going to write it in thirty to forty five days, and so I kind of did the math on it and said, "You know what? I'll do you know ten quotes a day." But what I realized, what I quickly found out, is that unlike a story that very linear. So you you know you kind of, you start you start at the beginning and you go through this journey in the story. When you're writing about quotes, every quote is different. So right after you come out of a flow from writing about one quote, then it's a completely different quote, and you got to switch your brain to a completely different concept. And so what I found is that the first the first day I, I got through the 10 quotes, like I said, I wanted to do 10 quotes a day. And then the second day I think I got through another 10. But by day three, I was down to five quotes. And I said, okay, you know what, I'll do five quotes a day. And then it turned to three and then two. And then next thing you know, I had to pick a different goal because at first it was 30 to 45 days. Then it was the next month. And then the month after that, and then the month after, until finally I said, you know what, Darren, what are you doing? You're either going to do this or you're not. And so I just buckled down and just got it done. It took me, it wound up taking me four months. Hey, man, that's actually good, though, because you actually finished and you adjusted and you actually didn't quit, man. So that's good. Yeah. (laughs) It was tough. It was tough. I will say that it was tough. It was a lot. It was a lot harder than I thought it was. I I, I underestimated it. Let me say that. I underestimated it. I mean, hey, that that's life, right? You go into something, and be like, yeah, man, I'm gonna get this. Come in there like in a box and ring your dance and everything. Be like, yeah, this is like gonna die. That's right. First one, right. Pew, pew, and yeah. then <laughs> boom, yeah, punch the face. <laughs> right. Right. Look, that's like what my Mike, Mike Tyson say. Every you know, everything's all good till you get punched in the face, and that's what happens. You know, that thing punching in the face. You know, it's like it's like it's like going up against you know a title fight, and you didn't even study your opponent, and that's what I did. You know, I did not take into consideration, you know, how hard it would be, but 
You know, I stuck in there, stayed in the ring, got it done. Yeah, man, and that's inspiration to others, man, because a lot of folks, they just want to follow this plan and then follow it to a T, and then if they get off course, like, oh, I got to start over. But it's like, <laughs> it's not always going to be that way, because like you said yourself, it's like you had a plan, but no. at first contact, it just failed. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. And you know what? Another thing that I did to help me with this process is that I knew, I know myself, and I know that because I have a ton of unfinished projects, a bunch of businesses I've started and just never finished them. And I didn't want this project to be like that because I also, before I wrote this book, I wrote an e-book that I never got published. And I did not want the same thing to happen. So what I did was I hired a coach. I hired a coach who was who also published my book as well. And the reason why I hired a coach is because I needed to have somebody, at least for me, I needed to have somebody that was going to hold my feet to the fire and make sure that no matter what, I was going to finish this. I was going to see this thing from start to finish. Because I got friends. I know, I know people who, who have published books on their own. They wrote the whole thing, published it themselves. That's not me. And I knew that if I was left to my own devices, this book, would have never gotten out. And so my advice to anybody out there that has a book inside of them that, they, that, that you want to get out and you know that you're not going to finish it or you're not going to complete it, hire somebody to help you. Hire somebody to, to hold you accountable to doing the things that you know you need to get done, but you're just not going to do on your own. Solid advice, man. Solid yeah. advice. Yeah, so shout, shout out to uh, Kimberly. Kimberly LeBou and LeBou Publishing, man, for, for for holding my feet to the fire, for, for helping me get this thing done. Because what, I'm, I'm telling you, without her, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done it. Because I, I, called, I called Kimberly, because I had worked with Kimberly in the past she, um, as a coach, and I called her when I was about, I'm going to say I was about, 90% done the book. Like I had a bunch of quotes done already, and, you know, I, I, I think I had a few more left to go. And it's, and it's like right before you're about to finish, like that's when you want to quit the most. And I felt yep. it. I'm like, and I felt it. I'm like, man, I really, I really just don't feel like doing this. And, it, and, it's, and it's so easy. When you get to that stage, that's when you get distracted the easiest, when you're right there at the end. It's like everything was pulling at me, and I, I had a million, a million and one reasons, you know, to, to focus on other things. And so I was like, nope, it's not going to happen this time. And so I called Kimberly up. I said, hey, look, I need help finishing this book, and I need help publishing it. So we worked something out, and, you know, we got it done. Yeah, get it done, <laughs> baby, get it done. <laughs> got it done. Got it done. Oh, that is freaking awesome, dude. Any advice for those when looking for a coach like a book publisher? Because we got some shysters out there, and it's good you're able to find someone who obviously is not a shyster and actually helps you to get it done. So any yeah. advice for getting a coach? Oh, yeah. A good one? Um, I would, yeah, I would go, honestly, I would, when it comes to when it comes to you know publish, publishing or your coaching, I would get a referral for something like that because you don't want to waste your money. You want to you want to get with somebody that has a proven track record. Um, so and and really the best way the best way to find that out is to go with somebody who you know and trust that has recommended you know somebody to you. So um, yeah, so that, that that would be my advice. If somebody's looking for you're looking for a publisher or a coach, you know, find somebody else who you who you respect that can refer somebody to you that they have used and have had you know good results. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. Business by referral, baby. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. You got to have somebody that can, you know, vouch for the services. You know, because if you don't, you know, you, you you better off just going on Craigslist. <laughs> I mean, why not? You know, anybody can, you know, make a fancy website and make all these claims, but if you don't have somebody that can vouch for that person's services, then you, you know, you're shooting in the wind. You might as well get on Craigslist. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> in the dial. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh man, so, yeah. life coach is on Craigslist. You can't. Yeah. Right. Hey, I've seen them. They on there. <laughs> they on there. I don't care. I, look, I'm not knocking them, but yeah, I, I would say if, you know that's the best way to ensure that you're going to get some some good services. Somebody else can can vouch for the work that they do. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of work that folks do in coaching, uh, what inspired you to become a life coach, man? Man, because I I I do it every day. I do it every day. It's like I I love it. I I I, um, I study so much. I'm all I'm reading something all the time. And, you know, I, I just noticed that people tend to gravitate towards me for advice. And I light up when I talk to people about it. So um, it was just natural. It was just a natural thing for me. You know, it's just something that I just naturally do. So, um, yeah, it was just something that I kind of kind of fell into. You know, and, and actually it's funny because, you know, I, just like the author speaking life coach I got on on my videos, I say this is your favorite author speaking life coach. I said all of those things before I actually did them. Like I was saying I'm your favorite author speaking life coach before I had any of those things. And here we oh. are. That's that Muhammad Ali swag, baby. That's not Yeah, you know, I, I I think I got that quote in there. No, no, did you read that in there? I think that's in there. Man, Muhammad I ain't getting through all the quotes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Muhammad Ali said, I am the greatest. I said that even before I knew I was. And it's yeah, like that. Man. Yeah, that self-talk is huge, man. Because as they say, the greatest conversation you will ever have is the conversation that you have with yourself. That's right. So tell yourself I'm small, I'm pretty, and I can get it done. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm a big believer in not lying to yourself. I don't believe in that. But I do believe in giving yourself, you know, a kick in the pants, you know, some hope, you know, some inspiration, something to aspire to. Um, yeah. yeah, I knew I could do it. That's why I kept saying it. I just had to, it just took a little bit of time to really believe it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Got to set yourself on fire, baby. That's it. And run all the way to fire station. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, but yeah. yeah set yourself on fire, man. Hopefully somebody won't put you out. <laughs> oh, Tommy. Now that I think about it, when you set yourself on fire, don't go to the fire stations. The, the fire stations will find you, man. So how do you man. stay motivated? That's right. <laughs> stay lit up. Stay lit. I know what they say now. I'm lit. Stay lit. That's right. That's right, man. We're all weed walking, man. We got to stay lit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I'm I'm lit I'm lit right now, man. It's it's been a um it's just been a wonderful journey. I'm appreciating it. And I'm uh, looking forward like I said, looking forward to putting myself out there, having fun. That's what I'm really trying to focus on, having having fun putting myself out there. Not taking this, this process too seriously, man. Just enjoying the ride, enjoying enjoying the journey. That's right, man, because yeah. it's a huge and, road, baby. 
Yeah, yeah, and look, real quick, I want to tell this tell this uh, story because you know everything doesn't you know work out the way it, the way you always plan. So when I got the um, after the book was done, went through the editing process, went through the formatting, it was finished, complete. All I had to do was and was receive a proof copy in the mail and approve it, give it the green light, and we we would be ready. So. I get the proof copy in the mail, and I had I had a friend of mine who I wanted to record me opening up the box and you know getting getting excited so I can you know post it to Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. So you know I had my friend she she has my phone she's she's recording. I, I get the package. I rip it open. And I pull the book out, and I look at it, and there's this split second of disappointment on my face. And I tried to hurry up and hide it and, you know, kind of continue on with the recording and, you know, acting like I was excited and I was ready for the book to, you know, be finished and complete and everything. And after her, she had stopped, she was like, you don't like it, do you? I was like, no. I was like, no, I hate it. What is this? Like the cover was blurry. It, it, was, it looked like it was out of focus. It, and I was like, what in the world is going on? I said, this cover looks horrible. And it was like this this weight of disappointment just fell on top of me. And, you know, I started kind of skimming through the book. I noticed some typos in there, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I just, I was just ready to give everybody their money back. And because I said, you know, I said, if I'm going to sell something, to somebody, then I at least want it to be of a certain standard. I'm, I'm not just going to, you know, put out garbage just with my name on this thing. Shoot, I'm on a cover. I can't act, I can't act like it's not me. And so my coach, she she texted me the next day because she, she had the tracking number. She knew I received it the day before, and she's like, you know, what happened? What's going on? And so I told her, I said, look, I hate the cover. It's it's out of focus. It's blurry. It looks grainy. I don't know what this is. There's typos in it. And she said, okay, wait, 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 wait. Just calm down, calm down. It's okay. We are going to get through this. And that's what she said to me. She said, we are going to get through this. So I breathe in and I breathe out and I said, okay, you're right. And, you know, after, you know, after we talked for a little while, you know, it kind of, um, you know, it kind of hit me like, you know, okay, Darren, it's okay. Everything doesn't always turn out perfect, you know, the first time around. And what happened was with the cover, she asked me to send her a photo that was at least 300 DPI, that's the resolution for the photo, so that when it goes to the printer, it prints as sharp as the picture. I guess, you know, there's a difference in the way you view it on your phone and how a printer prints it, you know, to scale, to a larger scale. You know, when it's not of a certain resolution, it doesn't print right. And I didn't, the photo that I sent her wasn't, you know, in the right resolution. And so I went, I kind of did some research, found out how to change the resolution of the photo, changed the resolution, sent her the new photo and the second proof copy. Oh, also, you know, gave her the, the grammatical errors that was in there. And when she sent out, when the second proof copy got sent out, it was perfect. And I said, okay, this is great. You know, I'm happy. We got through it. So that's the other thing to remember that. It's not always going to work out the way you, you think it is, you know, on the first time. And if it doesn't, it's okay. You know, you just got to have the attitude that no matter what happens, I'm going to roll with the punches. So, and that's, and that's a lesson on life. That was, I took that as a life lesson. You know, everything doesn't always work out, and that's okay. Hey, sometimes you just got to roll with the punches, baby. That's right, like a big old wheel. That's what I'm talking about. That's it. And that's real solid advice, too, for folks to keep in mind when they're publishing their books, too. It's like, make sure you have high-resolution photos, so that way the yes. don't jack up your cover. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> Lesson yeah, man. Learned. <laughs> My man went from Tank to Tito Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> from Tank to Tito real quick. I didn't know who I was on that photo. He was like, yeah, nah, man. man. <laughs> nah, man, I got to be Tank, man. I can't be right. Tito. I like Tito, Ooh. but I can't be Tito. <laughs> Ooh. Mm-hmm. Look, we got to get this right. Else I'm giving everybody their money back. <laughs> Yeah, man, went from R&B to heavy metal. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, real quick, man. Oh, man, but we we worked it out. We worked it out. We got through it. We got through it. Amen to that, indeed. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. So, yeah, since you said you're always reading, I'm pretty sure there have been some books that have inspired your mind, sharing a title or two that you may have read that have really inspired you in the past or something you're currently reading? Man, I'm going to tell you a book that I just read that has just been life-changing that I'm, that I'm, that I'm, yeah, I'm fin- I just finished it. Uh, you Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Hmm. Yeah, it's actually, as of right now, the number two book in the country is right under Michelle Obama's book. His book is number two. And uh, it's just, man, it's just an amazing book on on hard work. So just, man, the dude's work ethic is just ridiculous. He's done, like, over 60 ultra marathons. Uh, he, was, he, he was a Navy SEAL and... He went through ranger school and the army. Like this, this dude has just been through a crazy amount of, of stuff, and and the whole thing is is about uh, shedding all of your fears and your insecurities and all the things that you know you, that held you back from your past and just obliterating them. And so um, it's it's been a it's been a great read. I'm gonna probably go back through it again. So I, I I recommend that book to everybody, everybody. Oh yeah, I'm definitely checking that one out. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Beautiful indeed, beautiful indeed. Well, all right, coming down the pike here, not you on the beginning of your road to success as an author and amping up your life coaching business as well as speaking more. If you were to take all of your advice and you were to wake up tomorrow and you were 25 again in the current year of 2019, what would be the first piece of advice you'd give to yourself? If I were to wake up at 25. Yeah, man, you're going back two years. Ah, right. (laughs) If I were to wake up at 25, you know what, I I would tell myself, I would tell myself to find my purpose as soon as possible. Like sit down, take the time to find my purpose. And the reason why I say that is because when you when you have a purpose, when you have a a goal or a mission, there's certain things that you will not do because it's going to derail you from that mission. For an example. An athlete, when they're when they're on the road chasing a championship, or a boxer is preparing for a fight. See, his purpose in that moment is to prepare for that fight that he has coming up. His coach is going to tell him, or him or her, that there's certain things that you cannot do because you are going to mess up your chances of winning. There's certain things that you can't eat. There's certain activities that you can't indulge in or engage in. And I, I think that was the reason because when I was 25, I was I was wild and reckless and crazy and getting into all kinds of trouble and just messing my life up because I didn't have a purpose. And so when you, when you have a purpose and you're mission-driven, there's just certain things that you won't do. And so I would tell myself, find your purpose. Because right now you're running reckless without a purpose and you're messing your life up because of it. 
but thank God I found my purpose at 28. Else I wouldn't even be in the shape that I'm in now. So, yeah, that would be my advice. Find your purpose. Find your purpose. Oh, yeah, baby. Find that purpose, baby. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Easier said than done, that's for sure, though. <laughs> <laughs> it, is. it is. It takes work. It takes work. It takes work. It takes risk as well. It takes a lot of risk. Because you're not going to find it sitting at home on the couch. Well, all righty, man. So for those who want to keep in touch with you and buy some copies of your book as well as other things, how do we keep in yeah. contact with you? Okay, so you can you can purchase my book at www.darrenmitchellspeaks.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L, Speaks. Dot com and the Kindle version is also available at Amazon.com. So if you go on Amazon and type in my name, Darren Mitchell, or 101 Quotes for the Conscious Mind, you can purchase the Kindle version or the regular version, but I'd rather you go to my website. Um, you can also follow me on social media, Facebook, uh, Darren Mitchell, Darren Mitchell Speaks, and also on Instagram at Z Mitchell D. That is my my name on Instagram. That that's Z as in the last letter of the alphabet. My last name M I T M I T C H E L L, and my first initial D. Woohoo! Well, there you have it, folks. Go on ahead and head over to the wonderful website. That's going to be in the magical show notes. So we're going to show all the notes and nuggets you got from this interview. Head over to both Kindle and his website. Get the hardcover and the e-book. And I believe there is an audio book waiting in the wings, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's coming. It's coming. That's right. That's right. We don't need to wait nine months for this one either. That's what I'm talking nah, about. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's not going to be that long. <laughs> All right, go, go, go. That's good because we need to get the folks that can't see or the folks that love audio books. Right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, any parting words for the folks still listening? Any parting words? Oh, man, parting words 2019. This is your year. And prove it to yourself that this is your year by knocking out the things that you said you were going to do in 2018 and 2017 and 2016. Get somebody to hold you accountable to, do, to, to reaching all of your goals and put your feet to the fire, man, and just get it done. We are not getting any younger. Let's go. Thanks a bunch for your listening ears on the Going North podcast. I hope you really, really enjoyed that episode. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to share it with your friends and family, especially those who love podcasts and love listening to some inspiration and motivation.